What's up guys, DP here and welcome back to another PUBG Training Grounds episode number 14. This is going to be a full encompassing attachments guide. I'm also going to talk about in great detail about the weapon selection post patch 1.0 update number 12 where weapon balancing is a big deal now and how the new grips are going to affect your game style, your gameplay and even weapon selection. We've got a lot of stuff that we have to cover in this first guide. It is going to be the four main assault rifles, the SCAR, the M416, the AUG and of course the AKM. I'm going to leave the Groza out of this one specifically because I'm going to leave it for the SMG pile which will probably end up being training grounds number 15, the SMG attachments guide. This guide is going to be based off of two default tests. The first one is going to be a cluster test. How many bullets and how close of a grouping we can get based on the attachments that we are using. And the second test is going to be a recoil test. It's a standard recoil test to see how much vertical recoil we get based on the attachments that we're using. Just so you guys know that the standard that I've used for the bullet grouping or the cluster test is standing less than 20 meters from the target, standing up, leaning to the right, which in most cases is going to be the situation when you're clearing corners or you're leaning out of a tree or a rock or some kind of cover. Now, could I get better grouping if I was crouched or prone? Yes, probably, but that's not going to be a real world scenario. I wanted the scenario to be as real as possible and I've used the best bullet grouping for each and every individual grip, a best out of three. So I've shot 90 rounds with each grip, each individual gun, sometimes even more so that I could get you guys the best possible outcome and the best possible results. We're going to start the test off with everyone's weapon of choice post patch and that's going to be the Scar L. After that, moving on to the M4 the AUG and lastly the AKM. Now if you don't want to sit through the actual tests, I completely understand. You can go ahead and fast forward to the actual results and my synopsis of the results. I'll leave a link for all the timestamps in the description down below and you guys can just go ahead and skip that. But honestly, uh, I wanted to keep a log of all of my results just in case they pushed any backdoor fixes or upgrades to any of these guns. So right off the bat, you can see that the SCAR does have a substantial amount of recoil without any attachments. In fact, I had a hard time getting half of my uh, bullets on the target the first time around. I feel like they haven't changed much about the angle grip. It does help quite a bit when it comes to the vertical recoil of the SCAR and uh, just a tad bit when it comes to the horizontal recoil. But with the angled, I was actually able to get all of my shots as a smaller, tighter cluster on the target. The half grip has got to be one of the more viable grips when it comes to the SCAR. I was actually able to do interlacing parallel lines when I did the vertical recoil test and it does excellent when it comes to horizontal recoil as well. It reduces the normal vertical recoil by about two points and the horizontal recoil by about half a point. Now even though the lightweight grip looks just like the vertical grip, it actually increases the vertical recoil of your shots. Yes, you might be able to get more shots onto your target, but your overall verticality of recoil increases, increases so much that it's more than without any attachments at all. Now the jury isn't out for this one, but I think that the thumb grip has got to be one of the best grips for the SCAR. I was able to get an entire magazine on the target and I had a pretty good grouping right near center of mass. So with that said, I would say that the thumb grip is extremely viable when it comes to a spray and pray CQC situation. I feel like the vert grip hasn't changed that much. It still reduces your overall vertical recoil by the most amount, and there are still pockets of horizontal recoil, especially after the first four or maybe five shots, so look out for that. So here's some of my final thoughts on the Scar L after all the analysis is that it's a lot easier to use. It's a lot safer actually to use. It's a much better, easier controlled recoil with attachments. As you can see, the cluster on the half grip and the thumb grip 
were probably uh, some of the best. Uh, there were no red dots outside of the target. We got some good bullet grouping and they were fairly tight. I would say the thumb grip grouping was probably by far the best. It did have a little bit more vertical recoil than the half grip, but it really wasn't that noticeable. Unlike the lightweight grip, which has a ton more recoil, as you can see, uh, if you were to compare no attachments to the lightweight grip, you'd have more recoil on the lightweight grip. So I think the overall winners were the half grip and the thumb grip and the cluster on the thumb grip was just a, just a little bit better than the half grip. All right, moving on. Next, we've got the M416, everyone's favorite murder machine. That was pre-patch. Let's see how it does after the patch. So as you can see here, it's almost impossible to keep your reticle on the target. The difference between the first shot and the second shot is absolutely ridiculous. I don't understand the science behind that recoil, but the M4 is a different gun. As you can clearly see here, the M4 and the angle grip do not get along anymore. It used to be the best grip for the M4, and there's just tons of vertical recoil and pockets of horizontal recoil that'll mess with your spray all day long. Uh, I think anything after the first five or six bullets will be much harder to keep on target. The half grip has the least amount of vertical recoil when combined with the M4. As you can clearly see, the first 20 shots are spot on, but then after that, the horizontal recoil does take over a little bit. Overall, it's a huge benefit to have on the M4, and it definitely makes a difference. The lightweight grip sadly has the same outcome that it did on the SCAR and not much has changed. It's definitely got way more vertical recoil than needed and it's gonna be harder and harder to control after the first maybe five or six shots. IMO, you'd be better off with something else in this attachment slot. Now the thumb grip did fall short to me when it came to the M4. I was expecting a whole lot more stability than what I got. Yes, the vertical recoil has been reduced significantly, but to deal with the horizontal recoil, especially after the only the first 10 to 15 shots, was pretty rough. I think that both the vertical grip and the thumb grip fall into the same category when it comes to this gun. There's definitely some vertical stability here, but horizontal stability is harder and harder to control, especially after the first 10 to 15 shots. So after doing multiple spray tests, the bullet grouping with the M416 are just not as tight as the SCAR L. There also seems to be a huge jump with the M4 between the first shot and the second shot in vertical recoil, and that is very noticeable in the no attachments and the lightweight grip cluster. So the M4 is obviously not as viable as it used to be, but if you go with the half grip or even the vertical grip option, I think that you'll be able to get most of your shots on your target. IMO, those two seem to stand out the most, and they are clearly the winners of this gun. There is one prediction that I would like to make before I wrap up the whole M4 consensus, is that this gun will probably get a hotfix or a silent patch in the next few weeks. Mark my words, it's a little too unstable right now, but it's definitely gonna get a hotfix. And with that said, let's get to our final 5.56 caliber gun, the AUG. Now I gotta be honest, I was pleasantly surprised to see that the with the AUG, you could hit every single bullet on the target and having no attachments at all, uh, this was a big shocker to me and uh, not much vertical recoil to begin with. So it would seem as if the AUG actually has a more stable platform that it's starting off of. Now I didn't really see much improvement when it came to the angle grip on the AUG. It seems like almost the same variant of what it used to be. However, the vertical recoil has been reduced by quite a bit, especially if you were to compare it to the variant that has absolutely zero attachments on the gun. The half grip has to be the second best option on this gun. It seems like overall across the board, the half grip has been a pretty consistent grip when it comes to reducing vertical recoil and also reducing horizontal recoil evenly. Now 
Now, believe it or not, the lightweight grip did a whole lot better on the AUG platform than it did on the other two rifles. You're still going to have a tremendous amount of vertical recoil, but it's just not going to be as prevalent as it was on the SCAR or the M4. I really don't see anyone using this grip uh, to begin with to get a little bit of a bonus in your sway to get a huge deficit in vertical and horizontal is just not beneficial for anyone. The thumb grip on the AUG gives you a little bit more of an ADS speed, which is your aim down sight speed and weapon steadiness, along with recoil reduction as well. It's an overall viable grip for the AUG, but I do have to warn you that the gun will tend to get away from you after the 10th or the 15th shot. Now I tested the vert grip at least four, maybe five times, a bit more than the usual because I was getting some very unusual clusters there, really close and tight to each other, not to mention a reduction in vertical recoil and straight up horizontal as well. Very, very stable, very balanced for this gun. You can clearly see that even without any attachments, hands down, the AUG is the much more stable platform. Now, of course, this is why it's more sought for and it's in the crate. I can understand why they might have buffed the AUG a little bit in stability. It's an overall much more stable AR than the other two. Plus, if you look at all the clusters, you can clearly see that it's not that difficult to get most of your bullets on your target. Uh, hands down, the winner obviously is the vertical grip, uh, only followed by a second best, which is the half grip, which again, pretty consistent, guys. The half grip is pretty consistent throughout the board. Now, the next part, I'm going to show you the recoil in the new AKM. I don't know if it's buffed or if it's the same, but I'm just going to keep this as a record for the AKM. One without a compensator and a quick draw extended mag and one with a quick draw extended mag and a compensator. I'm not going to be talking over it because I just wanted to keep a record of the recoil pattern for my own log. So as you can clearly see here, the AKM is a straight up vertical line with hardly any horizontal recoil, even without a compensator. It does make overall recoil better with the compensator, but the fact that there's hardly any horizontal recoil makes it a much more viable gun in the game. Now for this last part of the video, I would like to bring the entire experiment together. It's why I started this whole process in the first place, was to find out which was the best gun when it came down to stability and which was the best gun to use when it came down to just spraying someone down really close in CQC situations. And I took the best from the SCAR, which was the thumb grip, the M416, which was the half grip, and the AUG, which was the vertical grip. And you can clearly see hands down the winner is the AUG. The spray and the graph actually match up fairly well. And second place, I'd give it to the SCAR with a thumb grip. And of course, third place, the M416. That murdering machine is not what it used to be post-patch. So I really hope that you guys found this guide helpful. I hope you found it informative. And I really hope that it helps you guys with your weapon selection, your grip selection in uh, patch 1.0 update number 12. This video took a very, very long time to make, guys. And I hope that it earns your like and maybe even share it with your friends if you found it useful. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe and turn on your notifications. As always, stay strong, guys, and I'll see you.